Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada's third city, just a few miles north of the U.S. border. Yesterday, a brash settlement on the edge of nowhere. Today, one of the most beautiful cities in North America and the busiest seaport on Canada's Pacific coast. So young, her story is still being written, but old enough to have developed a personality that is all her own. Home to three quarters of a million people who have a conviction that the best years are all ahead. To the visitor, the door is open and the welcome mat is out. And whether you're a big family man or a honeymoon party of two, the greeting is the same. Come on in. We'd like to know you and to help you if we can. We'd like you to see our city. And if it's directions you want, speak up. Anyone will be proud to point the way to city center. Not so long ago, as history measures time, this was a tangle of forest and bush surrounding a handful of shacks in their sparse clearings. The prolific growth that in time became a source of wealth had not yet been mastered. It was then only a jumping off place for the logger, the fishermen and the early prospectors. But in less than a century, those shacks have become streamlined pillars of stone and steel and glass expressing a spacious freedom in their creation. They stand as monuments to men with big ideas and faith in the city's future. But the past is not forgotten. In the city hall, one finds deep-rooted respect for tradition. Council meetings are preceded by the mace, a gift by the Lord Mayor of Westminster, sent from London in 1936. There is reverence in the opening prayer. O Lord, give this city and all its people thy leadership, that it may grow and mature to thy glory. Amen. This is a prelude to the business of the day. There's a saying in the West that when a tree falls anywhere in BC, its echo is heard in the financial district of Vancouver. For well, this is the business center of Western Canada's lumber industry. Vancouver is also the main business center for BC's fishing industry. A rugged fleet of men and ships that harvest the silver hoard, most of which ends up in a can. There are other phases of industry that the casual eye may not so easily find, but they're here, growing with the vigorous years into strong and vital forces in the community. Ships built and launched here find their way across the seven seas. They carry a message that men are building in Vancouver, using age-old skills to build new enterprises. And they'll tell you, too, that there's still plenty of room along the sheltered waterfront for more industries. The port is sheltered and spacious. 30,000 ships berth here each year, of every shape, size, and registry. And if Vancouverites seem to have salt water in their veins, it's understandable. For every day, they play host to a fleet of deep-sea freighters, visiting naval ships, 
and from India, Hawaii, and Australia, the glamorous luxury liners that make Vancouver a regular port of call. Three Canadian railways deliver their freight to these docks for shipment across the waterways of the world. Over 12 million tons a year. There's plywood bound perhaps for England, zinc for Japan, or salmon for the canneries heading for India. And always a steady stream of lumber from the forests and mills that clear their products through this port. is a clash of colors, sounds, and tongues. A port of call for ships and seamen of all countries. For the visitor, a tour to the harbor is a fascinating experience. They'll find that this is not just an anchorage for deep sea ships, nor a haven for fishing craft, but also a training ground for champions of today, a testing ground for the champions of tomorrow, Vancouver's International Airport is Canada's western base for airlines of the world and the nation's port of entry for travelers from across the Pacific. A million passengers plus 10 million pounds of freight pass through here every year. Nature was indeed kind to this community, for it has more than a just share of beaches, parks, and green forested areas. Open invitations to live outdoors, and those who seek the heart of Vancouver will find it in the beautiful homes and gardens. Here, even the humble amateur produces miracles, for nature is the gardener's helper with the perennial green thumb. Olympic champions, many have come from Vancouver. This may be due to their pioneer heritage or to the environment in which they grow. But whatever it is, the athlete has a field day here. Water skiers enjoy their sport on a sheltered inlet. While just a few minutes journey away by chairlift, there's another type of skiing in deep snow of alpine slopes. Sometimes on a spring night, high above the sparkling lights of the city, a torchlight procession down a North Shore mountain becomes a dramatic festival of youth and motion. thousand feet below, golfers play against the spectacular scene on one of the city's many beautiful courses, adding to a year-round panorama of sporting events. From August to November, they catch a fever called football. 30,000 fans roar their approval of the BC Lions in Empire Stadium. The fever is infectious. It draws the whole province together into an army of loyal followers. It's anybody's game. A player can be a mere number tonight and a hero tomorrow.
millions of visitors, the name Vancouver means Stanley Park. Once the scene of Indian potlatches, this magnificent thousand-acre park was named and dedicated by Lord Stanley in 1889. The park is an important part of growing up for the youngsters of Vancouver who regard its inhabitants with curiosity and indulgence as they store up memories for the years ahead. They teach them young here in this miniature city street, would-be car owners get their first lesson in safe driving. It's all taken pretty seriously, too, with a real policeman on hand to keep an eye on the reckless drivers. Watch it, boy. The surrounding city has grown from a village to a soaring metropolis. The quiet woodland walks of Stanley Park have changed very little over the years. It is one of the finest natural parks in existence, and only a five-minute walk from the center of town. Mountain, the man-made wonderland of Queen Elizabeth Park was once a rock quarry. Exotic plants and flowers have transformed it into another beauty spot. In this land of the totem poles, the past recedes beyond living memory, but its shadow falls over the present. A troop of scouts, almost within sight of their North Shore homes, explore the virgin forest untouched since the time of man. Those who sense this contrasting portrait will more deeply understand this metropolis. There are 14 miles of safe sandy beach within the city limits a summer vacation land outrivaling the travel pictures of faraway places. Here is one of the few cities where crowded beaches are part of the downtown area, and sun worshippers can make the most of it. Here is a picture of a city in bikinis and sunsuits. But if you want to be alone, there's plenty of beach. Where there's a sea, there's a sailor. Between 30 and 40,000 would-be sailors, in fact, crowd the seaways on holidays and weekends. And the craft range from do-it-yourself models to slick products of the shipbuilder's art. But once aboard, with the sun on the waves, everyone's a master mariner, and maybe an Isaac Walton. Sports fishing lures anglers from all over the continent, eager to try their luck at landing a big one. And here, where a Thai salmon weighs as much as 80 pounds or even more, they're truly big, but you still have to catch them. Sometimes Lady Luck upsets the male ego, and all he can do is be a good sport, laugh about it, and write it off to fisherman's luck. A red 
snapper may not have the prestige of a giant spring or coho, but it's big, and sometimes that's what counts. With all this activity, time comes when you're hungry. And because the climate here is temperate all year round, top up or down, you can dine in your car right through the four seasons. On a summer night, there's something for everyone. The amateur variety show at Kitsilino Beach attracts an informal, easy-going crowd. While downtown, entertainment on an intercontinental scale can be found at the Queen Elizabeth Theatre. Home of the Vancouver International Festival, it draws music and drama lovers from all parts of the world. It's in effect the Salzburg and the Edinburgh of the West. Since this city has often been called Canada's gateway to the Orient, it is natural that an Oriental theme should sometimes dominate the festival events. of the festival program, a Buddhist priest from Japan demonstrates an ancient art, calligraphy, against a background of priceless watercolors. While at the University of British Columbia, students pursue special summer courses in art, sculpture, and drama. The university wields a strong influence on Vancouver's educational life, in 1915, it was a collection of wooden huts housing 400 people. Today, as one of the continent's leading universities, it has a yearly enrollment of 13,000 students from all parts of the globe. The campus covers 1,000 acres, and the faculties and curriculum are designed to help meet the needs and problems not only of a city, a nation, but of the world. To a mess. It is yours, is the challenging motto of UBC. Its doors are open to students of all races and creeds. New and beautiful student buildings continue to rise on the broadening campus, many of them donated by generous citizens who realize the importance of this Western University. Among these donations, and in harmony with the cosmopolitan atmosphere of the campus, is the Oriental Tea Garden, designed by a leading Japanese architect. Here in Vancouver, everybody likes to browse and shop. It's great fun, no pressure, no sales pitch, and the prices are attractive. But the most exciting shopping tour takes second place to the opening day of the Pacific National Exhibition. It's carnival time in Vancouver.
Here now, one of the top five exhibitions on the continent is in full swing. The PNE is more than an annual fun festival. It's a permanent part of life in Western Canada. At once, a meeting place of peoples and an exhibition of their achievements in industry and in the arts. people enjoying themselves at the PNE. Night comes to the city and brings a curtain of magic. The after dark menu of where to dine and what to do is written in brilliant letters along the brightest street in Canada. For here, the night has a thousand eyes, flashing, beckoning. Vancouver is a happy blending of ancient custom and modern sophistication that has added color and stature to her life and thought, spice and variety to her eating habits. Exotic dishes of all nations can be found here, for this is a seaport with an international flair. In this all things to all men city, the pink blush of springtime changes gradually to the green of summer and later to the gold of fall with a constant invitation to the visitor to share this beauty. Vistas of mountain and forest of sea and sand, combine in a kaleidoscope of dreams and friendly people to make the adventure complete. Honeymoons end sooner or later, and visitors may take their leave to journey back from whence they came. Seasons change, but there's one thing here that never changes, winter, summer, spring, or fall. The visitor is always welcome in Vancouver, British Columbia.